I'm gonna show you how to take these types of photos here and make them look like these types of photos here. So you may have seen this before, but I guarantee you we're gonna throw a few tricks and twists and turns on this one so hopefully you'll learn something along the way too. What is up my beautiful people? Here we are back again. I'm Ben with another video tutorial, this one on Photoshop. I've never done a video on Photoshop before. This is a really simple one. I by no means am a Photoshop expert, but this one is too simple not to show. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so this is a photo that I posted up on my Instagram uh, probably about a week or two ago down in Kalala Bay. Um, I really like this shot and as it is, it's perfect. I posted it, so not perfect, but um, I was happy with it. But we're gonna take this one-click method and try and spice this thing up nice and quickly. So first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see, you can see we've got one lay here, it's called the background. Now we can just drag that all the way down to this little paper item here and what it's gonna do is just copy that background for us. Now there's two ways you can do that. So if we just go back again, and I like to use the method which is just Control J. I'm on a Windows machine, it works for Command J if you're on a Mac as well. So, and then that just duplicates that layer again. Now what we wanna do now is just go straight to filter. This is how easy it is. Now you may have seen these types of images uh, from landscape type of photographers on Instagram and this is basically how they do it. We're gonna go straight down here to Motion Blur, hit Motion Blur, and then already, like it shows you a preview of what's happening. Now these types of images work really well when there's a bunch of colors in there and there's a strong horizon line. It really works well with shots of like the sky or clouds, water, um, and then also a mix of colors. So already you can see with this, it's blending in all of those colors nicely. It's, I mean, this is just automatically set to zero. So if we set it to 90 here, you'll see that it doesn't look anywhere near as good. So it really wants to follow that horizon line and that's what's kind of nice. So even at two degrees, it kind of just makes it a little bit funky, but at zero seems like the, the sweet spot there. And now you can play with this. Any, I find that anywhere between, uh, say like 500 and 2000, like the full amount, is probably the right amount you want to do. So already what you can do is anything less than that kind of just looks like an out of focus photo. You can see that's me down in the corner there and then once you get up to a certain point I kind of fade away with that blur um, but yeah so what you want to do is probably push it around somewhere like there and then that's good to go from there you can pretty much post that one ready to go to Instagram and everyone will like it and everyone will love you for it anyone can do this photo you can also do this photo in camera but I like to do it in post because then you have the option of you know, manipulating it or just leaving it as it is. And so that's kind of cool, but let's take this to a whole new level because we don't want to just post average normal stuff. All right, so <laughs> we always want to push ourselves. We want to we want to look for a different, you know, we want to be different. We want to be, we want to show something a little bit different. So let's just cancel out of that because we don't want that motion blur. It's too boring. I mean, it's not boring. I like it, but we want to take it up to a whole new level. So let's go back into filter Let's go down, back into blur, and instead of going into motion blur, we're gonna drop it one more and go down into radial blur. Now, automatically, this is set on my previous settings. It's automatically set to spin. Now, and I'm guessing that this one doesn't use as, uh, uses a little bit more computing power because it doesn't give us a preview. Maybe in the future, Photoshop will give us a preview of this so we can have a look at it. I generally leave my quality settings to good. Um, Best seems to take a little bit longer to render out. Um, but if we put this to spin, now it does give us a, a kind of semi preview, like a little black and white box here that we can look at. Now where we wanna place this box is, I generally like to place it where I want the spin to start from. So if there's a spinning, let's say we wanna start spinning it from where the sun is. So we wanna place it roughly where the sun is on the image, which is somewhere around, oh, roughly around there. And we're gonna keep it at spin for now, just have a look at it, and then we'll go from there. So let's leave it at 49, that's fine, and just see what happens to this image. Okay, so that's just weird and crazy. Like, it's almost like this weird lens, 
magnifying glass that spun everything out of uh, focus, which in itself kind of looks kind of cool too. Um, but let's play with that even more. So what we're going to do is with the, the layer selected here, we're going to go down to this thing, which will add a mask. Uh, now the mask in itself does nothing. It just adds a white layer there. And now what we want to do is grab our paintbrush. It's set to white right now, so we can just press X if the black is behind it and it will switch them over. And what we can do now is just paint away where we don't want that blur effect to go. So let's say we want all down here to be... Now what you also want to have is a, a nice wide brush that has on a, a super soft wide brush. So hardness down to zero and then that way you can just start painting into where you don't want that effect to be. And so already that's starting to come out quite interesting. I would probably move the um, the start of the circle over a little bit further. And so we can just go reverse that and start again. Um, but already you can see that's already giving us a, a neat little effect there. So we can, you know, you can choose how much you want in and how much you want away. It's almost like a bit of a rainbow type of effect now that's coming through. And so if we just want to like, say, paint a little bit more of those clouds back in and just allow the other... Uh, swirl to kind of stay there and we can maybe just brush in a little bit at the top here so it's a little bit more and so there you go you have something just a little bit different so if we just check the before and after on that one just something a little bit more interesting to look at now I don't, I've never used that spin one in terms of posting it to Instagram or any other area so what I usually do is this so let's just remove that whole layer we'll duplicate it again with control J We'll go to filter and we're going to go back to blur, radial blur. And then instead of the spin, we're going to go to zoom because I really like this zoom. Now we're going to move that over again because in the last one, it was probably a little bit too far left. Let's just open up the amount a bit more. So let's push it to, yeah, 66 looks fine. Let's push OK and just see where this one takes us. Now our already liking where this one is going um, let's add the mask and let's paint away all of that area down below <clears throat> and just give a little bit of that wash i don't care if some of those rays down here are still there because it kind of looks like it's coming directly out of the sun which is really nice now for me that is something that is super pleasing to look at just straight away not really doing much else just having a look at that the difference here, I mean, it's a, the previous shot's great as well. That just adds that extra little bit of motion, a little bit of um, oomph to your image that just gives it something extra and something different. And then for me, I'm happy with that. I'll be willing to post that photo. Um, let's have a look at the before and after. Pretty good. Okay, let's move on to something different and just see where we can go with this. There's another one that I've done with uh, the surf. So... Yeah, I've used the focal point as the sun again for that one. And you can see the difference there already. It looks great. Okay, let's move on to this next one. Okay, so basically we've got we've got a radial blur for the clouds and we've got a motion blur for the water. And there we go. We've added two different elements together. Now let's add an element of a subject in there and just see what we can create. So this really, this definitely draws your eye directly to the middle. So there's Crystal walking along this little boardwalk at Ostermere out into the sunrise and so if we look at the, the previous before photo that's what the photo looked like there but when we add the radial blur and all we have to do is just mask out with that with that layer again just in here um, to just you know let her and if you spend a little bit of time this is obviously a quick edit so I've just quickly jumped in if we just so if we delete the layer mask there, you can see that the motion blur is affecting the whole image with the center of that radial blur coming through from crystal. So, so if we just enable that once again, you can spend a little bit of time with this and get a little bit more precise, but this is just a, just, this is just a quick edit. And so it's basically the black and white we're playing with and we just want to circle around that. And you can be as creative or as, you know, you can go as detailed as you like. You can zoom right in here and get, you know, very precise around your your painting. You can go right around there, get really tight in if you like. And obviously, this is just for the purpose of this one. I just want to show you what's possible. Now, where you may have seen it, now credit to Max Bender. I've just downloaded his photo from Unsplash because I don't shoot a lot of cityscape stuff. But this is where 
uh, you can take that motion blur and start taking it to a whole new level with the layer mask. So let's give that one a go right now. Let's duplicate this layer again. And let's go with the motion blur. Now instead, oh, it's already set to 90 degrees. Instead of, because with the last one, we were doing it at zero. Now, if we have it on zero, you can see it's already made this weird cross hatchy pattern. So in this image, you'll see that most of the lines that are in here are vertical. So we don't want that motion blur to go across because you know, when you see a horizon, it kind of works with that. But with this one, the main lines, the main subject lines here, or the frame, is all going vertically. So let's move that to 90. Again, hit the preview. Let's have a look at it. And that already is starting to look really nice. So let's leave it at, yeah, 14, 1500 sounds fine for this image. <clears throat> now, let's add that layer mask. Now, instead of painting on this one, we're going to use the gradient tool. So that's gonna give us a soft gradient into the blur so we can take it away. So we're gonna do two things here. Let's have a look at it two ways. Now, if you hold shift while you're dragging it, it'll it'll basically make a straight line on uh, 0, 45, and 90. So we're gonna keep it uh, at 90 so we get a nice straight line with those building lines. Let's add that in and... What? It's like the sky is swallowing the buildings. It's amazing. So these types of shots I really love. I love seeing these and I love, because I think they're just super creative and they just, it's like this weird inception-y type of um, surreal world that we're living in. Um, now you can see down here, we've got some reflections with, it looks like it, it has been raining in the city here. And it is, the the reflections are quite harsh because we've got these really highlighted bits and these dark spots. Now, if we go over to that layer mask and we just have it selected, hit Control or Command I, and what that's going to do is it's going to invert where that um, gradient is going. And if we just bring that back down a little bit further, and then now... We've got these vertical lines with um, working with these lights and those reflections, but it's just softened it a little bit. And so straight away, you can see how that, it almost looks like we've got some really, you know, shallow depth of field, something that's sitting in front of the camera when we've taken the photo. And so that's awesome. How about we take it another step further again, and let's do that with a portrait. So let's go over to, this is another photo that I haven't taken. I don't take a lot of portraits either, but I like this because it has some vertical lines in here. Uh, this is from Hayden Golden. Um, let's try the exact same thing. So let's duplicate. Let's go to filter. Actually, if you if you notice here, it's already set as the last used filter. So if we just press that, it should just give us exactly what we need. Let's add the layer mask and let's add that gradient back in again and let's see how that works. And so you can see there, um, again, amazing. Now, if you want to just get a little bit more and you think, oh, you know, we've missed out a little bit here. Let's get our paintbrush tool and we'll just paint that rest in just like that. And if you feel like it's getting a little bit too close to the face, just paint away on that. And then, <clears throat> and there you go. You can see, and it's the lines are obviously much harsher on there. We can add that Gaussian blur just to soften it again. Uh, perfect. And that is ready to go. Let's have a look at another one from Andre Benz. This is one I prepared earlier. You can see I've, where that black part is masked out from. So we're just adding a little bit of extra motion to this train tunnel here. Something different. How easy was that? Literally, like, okay, maybe it was a little bit more than one click. I may have deceived you a little bit on the one click. But it's pretty close to one click, right? If you like this video, or even if you didn't like it, like, you know, do something. Let me know in the comments below. Give it a thumbs down if you have to. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I will see you, hopefully, in a very near video in the future. Catch you later.